and now for something completely different. I was getting close to you all kind of getting the virtual avatars and doing things and scanning myself, but it was still an annoying for a lot of the tasks. Cleanup, rendering. Okay, so by now, I guess most of you in the tech world have heard about DALI. You type in a text and it gives you an image. The image, again, doesn't need to exist. It doesn't care. It just takes, builds on top of so many different images that exist in the world and it builds something creative new. Dali, okay, an asteroid on a horse, you can type in different things. But it might get things wrong. So things that aren't actually possible in the real world, although this could be possible, especially in Belgium, but <laughs> it is not something that's actually happening. And some weird stuff, like, you know, probably you never see, uh, like in Skullwalk or removing the sand with vacuum cleaner. So this DALI is part of OpenAI, and OpenAI is pretty much closed source. And they built another kind of way of interfacing this, querying this. Instead of an API, they used one of the bots, and they called it mid-journey. Mid but then, lo and behold, nobody's going to stop with a kind of closed software. And there's always that one group that will think about making things open source. Thankfully, Stable Diffusion, they use a slightly different model than DALI, but at least you can download the software, you can run it yourself. It's going to take forever, but... So they spent, what was it, 600K dollars on generating the model. So good luck if you're at home, but at least it's reproducible. And you don't have to build the whole model to use it. So you can just use it, download it, and kind of generate your own images. And you don't have to rely on an API of, or get credits from something else. And so again, open source prevailed and it is now surpassing open API, which wasn't really open, to real open API. And you can even search the data set that was used because sometimes you don't know what images are used uh, in the data set and for copyright reasons, you want to know. And as you probably heard in many of the data talks and the machine learning, the data that you put in will put, determine what is generated. So this is a set that, um, of data that got changed for Japanese culture. So the left image in the, in the middle is a salaryman oil painting, European style, and then the same thing Japanese style but they needed to have a different set of images to do this. And of course, the whole explosion after this, whether that's your Photoshop, your Figma, the, all the graphical tools all of a sudden had, like you don't have to design things anymore, just type the text and the image will appear. Well, almost. And they're able to do cool things. So you type in one text and then you type another text and then you type in other text. So first one, like a brightly lit room, and then standing in the church, and you just keep adding things to the scene. Again, pretty mind-blowing. This is technology available for everybody, so this is not something you have to pay a lot of money for. And then it started to completely get creative. So you generate a Baby Yoda, you generate a galaxy, and then you start connecting the images with the pieces in between. So again, first more stars, because you can never have more enough stars in Star Wars. And then you start removing things, so you let the AI fill the gap. Seamless transition between the two generated images. Maybe a little bit closer to home, for the people creating storyboards, and they're always kind of annoyed that they don't find the image somewhere that they want to use in the storyboard. This was an experiment done. Um, a customer painting at the kiosk in black and white, fine line style. So 
think about it as a creative tool, not just for your Photoshop and so on, so maybe more closer to home. And we talked about the game engines, and in the game engines, they started also creating plugins. There was a wall in the game engine, and we just want to have a poster there. Type in the poster, what do you want, what style? Quite easy. So you don't have to do copy and paste of the image, or look for it there. And then for brainstorming, maybe visual cues inspire you from one thing to the other. But it doesn't always have to be images, it could also be medical images. And again, maybe you need a bigger data set or kind of have things that you need to test. So this generative is not just confined to creative art there as well. What about the house? You always want to express like to the architect, like this is the house that I really wa want. So you start typing the text and it just generates the house style that doesn't exist because you can't find the image on the internet, but this is exactly what you wanted. You can go beyond 2D for 360 images, similar thing. And then you can do different things. With the text, you can select, type what you want to select to cut or to mask. Here you would type, select business suit. And all of a sudden, instead of having to manually select all the dots, it knows this is the business suit and can just say, delete this and replace this to a battle suit. Some more fun ways is kind of, you take your Lego, you build it, and you actually create an image out of this for your kids realistically, so they know how it's gonna look in the real world. But even storytelling, one scene, I take an image, and then the story actually guides the image, suggests the next part of the story, and I can keep building on this. And even if I have in a scene, I'm a cameraman, and I have kind of one shot, I can ask it, how would this look from a drone? How would this look from a side? And then the AI start generating this. So, Otherwise, you have to go back to the scene and kind of start thinking about what did I not shoot there as well. So it's almost that this is a new job, prompt engineering. You just type in text and magically things appear what you actually wanted to have. And somebody kind of made the, maybe more from uh, pilot or co-pilot from, from GitHub, they said, Programming is starting to become a conversation with your computer. So you express the intent that you want to have, and the computer will actually try to generate what you want. So instead of kind of writing what we know as a real code, or hardcore code, or whatever you want to do, it, this is a new way of getting a result. There's meetups, there's a newsletter, and search engines, because you want to search for wall fears, then it gives you the images, and now you want to know what the prompts were that were used to generate the images, so maybe you can have better prompts there as well. You can always sell prompts if you have like a very descriptive thing there as well. And you can also have auto-completion. You type part of it, and then it suggests a lot of different styles that you can edit. So you get better at typing the prompts like a Grammarly for prompts. And then you have macros, because you group certain image and you say, this is a concept, and then I want to have that concept in my prompt uh, verified, uh, used. So I know cat toy was a bunch of pictures. I know the style that I specified had a bunch of pictures, and this is how they actually get to use together. So it's using concepts of, of kind of grouping of different uh, generated images. You sometimes have to, again, it looks too realistically or too strange or the uncanny valley. So sometimes you have to, it's useful that you give it a little bit of a negative prompt so that it's not that clean an image. And then, again, we're an engineer, so we want to reverse engineer things. Um, we have the image. Hmm, what could have been the prompt for this image? But it doesn't stop at images. Again, this is the explosions since I gave the last talk in 
maybe August. And all this, what I'm not talking about, is just brand new that came out of it. Google started to have text to video because why not? You have the same data. Meta couldn't stay behind. They have the same thing, but they can also create a static from a, a, a moving image from a static image. And you can specify a few images, and then it creates a transition from one image to the other. And you can have like one image, and it creates multiple variations of the image. But what about texture? Not just the movement, not just the image. And I want to say it's a shiny metal swan. So I'm, I'm specifying what I want as the texture used. Or maybe I have a video of a tennis court, but I want to change the background by specifying a prompt. This is things that exist, right? This is not like some random thing. This is really existing software. But then the same thing can be used to generate motion. Random thing all of a sudden becomes, I walk a certain way. And you remember that I had to buy all these motions before? Now I can just generate them from the images. Throws a ball, just generate it. And then I can give it a sequence. First, there is a realistic, photo, realistic bear swimming. Then he passes on the water. And then I want to keep him swimming, and so on. So it's a complete story that I'm specifying to generate a video from here. And then from that image, you kind of have the 3D model. And you can change the lighting uh, to kind of change how the image is done. And you start with the 3D model, and you start adding things. So this is not anymore a generated picture, or a motion, or a video. This is a 3D model that I'm specifying with text. And I can give it different properties. How about this? I have an image, it got generated, and then I create a 3D version out of this, and then I start manually editing this in 3D, how the scene needs to look like. Whoa, sorry. but. This kind of keeps blowing my mind. And why stop at an image? Why not create a whole world? Because I, I took a background image and I did a 360 scan. <laughs> Just create a whole world. And so this is an example how video editing will start looking. Import a city street, boom. Make it look more cinematic, boom. Remove the object. So it completely changes this manual labor that we're used to of doing things. Maybe Google will start changing and it will just not ask us for a question, but it will ask us like, what AI do you want to have applied? Or what do you want to do in the future? And as always, the engineers will ruin it. We're starting with a simple prompt engineering. And you probably will end up with prompt flow, prompt lake, prompt queue. Too complex. But hey, let's enjoy the movement right now. This is a bunch of books I recommend. I'll keep the slide up later. To summarize, my simple journey of creating myself for a video is not ended. But I was amazed of all the things that I learned and how things keep changing. Um, when you're working, uh, let's say, a regular company, you have a form and an HTML and an API. This field is completely different. So I had to learn so much new things to get going. Um, I hope this actually inspires you to start looking at this technology, at the real code, and maybe start working and contributing to this. My hope is to have a conference about this here in Belgium. Um, somewhere in March or April, where I tried to get engineers in the room that can explain actually what was happening, what I've shown, because I just gave an overview of all the things that are doing. Uh, and I hope I can see you there. So you can follow me on Twitter uh, to get more announcements. And 
If this talk was of any interest to you, uh, please talk to me after the talk. And thank you for your time. And go enjoy the movie later. <laughs>